Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. Some great sports history that happened on January 30th, and we try to look at it through the view of the uniform jersey numbers of the players that made the great history. And today we're going to talk about a plethora of them, uh, some great ones like Wayne Gretzky, John Matuzak, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Carl Malone, just to name a few. And we have some great history for you, so check it out right after the intro. Hi, my name's Darren Hayes, and I know you've heard me on the Pigskin Dispatch talking about football history for years. Well, now I'm on a new mission, a quest to find sports history in other sports as well as football by learning through the jerseys and the apparel and the gear that the players wore and the franchises supplied their teams. It's an educational trip, and I'm taking you with me day by day, player by player, uniform by uniform, the Sports Jersey Dispatch. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, sports friends. This is Darren Hayes of Sports Jersey Dispatch, and welcome once again to the Pigpen, where we're going to talk about some great Jersey Dispatch history of the date of January 30th. And our numbers today, as we talked about earlier, 73, 22, 78, 72, 44, 16, 99, 2013 and a number 32. Let's get right at it because you can tell we've got a lot of history to talk about. A January 30th, 1936. The new owners of baseball's Boston Braves did a survey of newspaper journalists to pick a new team moniker. There were 1,327 different nim- nicknames submitted for review and a handful of them were pretty strongly considered. The winner was announced in the Boston Globe the next morning that the team would now be known as the Boston Bees. However, the franchise would return to the Braves' name in 1941. Now, the Bees, that's kind of a, a cool name. You can imagine the uniforms. You know, I think I'm, I'm picturing like those uh, throwback uh, Steeler, Pittsburgh Steelers uniforms, the Bumblebee uniforms. How about a baseball team wear them? Almost like a, a Houston Astros, only uh, with a black and gold color. The Houston Astros of the uh, 1970s, that is, and 80s. Those entries to the newspaper to pick a new nickname started with every letter of the alphabet except for the letter X. You know, very interesting indeed, 1,327 of them submitted. We've got a nice uh, post of the headline newspapers.com has from the Boston Globe back in 1936 on our website, jerseydispatch.com, where you can just Google the Sports Jersey Dispatch. Look for that January 30th with all the numbers at the top of the header. Okay, January 30th, 1968. The NFL Draft took place 1968 style. Ron Yeri from USC was the first pick by the Minnesota Vikings. Now, Yeri would wear the number 73 for the Vikings. And as a future Hall of Famer, he would end up playing 15 seasons, making it to seven Pro Bowls, and he was a six-time All-Pro. You can learn more about Ron Yeri over on our sister site, Pigskin Dispatch, January 30th, uh, football history headlines there. January 30th, 1973, taking it a little bit of hockey, the 26th NHL All-Star Game was played at Madison Square Garden in New York City. The Eastern Division defeated the Western Division by the score of 5-4, to four, and the most valuable player was Greg Paulus, number 22 of the Pittsburgh Penguins, and he played left wing for them. Uh, we just had a memory of those uh, great uh, Penguins teams back, uh, at least the Penguins uniforms. The teams were okay, had some great players. Uh, Paulus is one of them we, that I personally remembered talking about, but uh, those baby blues of the 69-70 season, those uniforms, wow, tremendous. Still uh, thinking about those. That same day, January 30th, 1973, the NFL had another draft for the 73 season. John Matuzek 
from the University of Tampa was the first pick by the Houston Oilers. John wore, yeah, I did say Houston Oilers. You don't think of Matuzek as Houston Oilers. But John wore number 78 in his time with the Oilers, and he was probably better known by his number 72 with the Oakland Raiders and uh, I believe the LA Raiders years later in his career. That's where he really made his mark on the NFL. Uh, was with the Raiders. That's where most of us remember him. But he's a pretty good player with the Oilers, too. Uh, January 30th, 1978, Addy Joss and Larry McPhail were both elected in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Joss was a great pitcher for Cleveland from 1902 to 1910, many years before the uniform numbers were worn. McPhail, he was a famous lawyer and quite the baseball executive before World War II with the Cincinnati Reds, Brooklyn Dodgers, and the New York Yankees, and was a one-third owner of the Yankees from 1945 to 1947. So he got in on the uh, executive uh, moniker there for, to get into the Baseball Hall of Fame. On January 30th, 1983, at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, we had Super Bowl 17. It was played in which the Washington Redskins outlasted the Miami Dolphins 27-17. The most valuable player was Washington's bruising running back, the diesel, John Riggins, who wore number 44. We talked quite a bit more about him uh, on Pigskin Dispatch, just like we talked about Matuzak earlier. Uh, so look for that January 30th football history headlines. And we got a question of the day here. Now, that we said the Redskins were playing the Dolphins. This is January 30th, 1983, Super Bowl 17. Who was the Dolphins' starting quarterback in this game? Think about that for a second, because I, I had to think about it for a moment. But the natural response would probably be to say Dan Marino, number 13. Well, that was a few years before he was even drafted, so he was probably an underclassman at, at the University of Pittsburgh still. The answer, starting quarterback, was David Woodley, who wore number 16, for the Dolphins in that game, in that uh, losing battle, 27-17, as they lost to Washington in that Super Bowl. Now, January 30th, 1990, the Los Angeles Kings hockey uh, center, Wayne Gretzky, wearing his famous number 99, set an NHL record by scoring his 100th point of the season for the 11th straight season. The great one reached the milestone record with an assist in a 5-2 Kings win over the visiting New Jersey Devils. Now, you always think about the Gretzky and those Edmonton Oilers dynasty that he played in there. But remember, near the end of his career, he had that, that big trade, uh, went out to the Los Angeles Kings, really saved that franchise out there, and uh, really put some uh, butts in the seats in the stadium there. Helped uh, have hockey be a, a big market uh, item uh, in Los Angeles. Now, January 30th, 1994, we had Super Bowl 30, I'm sorry, Super Bowl 28 <laughs> at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, Georgia. The Dallas Cowboys defeated the Buffalo Bills 30 to 13. The most valuable player was Dallas Cowboys running back, number 22, Emmett Smith. January 30th, 1996, future basketball Hall of Fame Magic Johnson was wearing his legendary number 32 jersey after five years of retirement. Yeah, man was out of basketball for five years, came back. He re-entered the league with his old team to help the LA Lakers to a 128-118 win over Golden State at the Great Western Forum. He still had the magic, too, as he scored 19 points in that game and hauled down eight rebounds and registered 10 assists. Now, if you remember, uh, Magic had an illness. Uh, it was a positive test for HIV, uh, which at the time prevented him from playing further basketball until a few years later when they figured it was safe enough so he could not uh, uh, have a very good chance of infecting fellow players out on the court. Uh, January 30th, 1998, the All-Star Florida Marlin catcher Darren Dalton, who wore number 20 with the club that season for that one partial season, 1997, uh, well, he retired from baseball. Dalton had spent the previous 14 seasons as a member of the Philadelphia Phillies, wearing number 10 on his uniform. Little known fact is that he did play a part in the 1983 season on a call up from the minors to the Phillies but he wore number 29 in 83 and then went back down to the minors for like a year and a half came back to the Phillies donned that number 10 
January 30th and 2000 in the big NFL game of the season at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. A very memorable Super Bowl. Number 34 was played. And it came down to the last play, the last second, and the final one-half yard of the field as the St. Louis Rams stopped the Tennessee Titans 23-16. to Man, do you remember that? That last play of the game, Tennessee had that last drive, drove all the way down the field, their running play up the middle and at the back, and I forget who it was. It might have been uh, Eddie George even, uh, trying to plow his way into the end zone and just get stuffed, you know, all kinds of rams hanging on to him, and they just tackle him about probably six inches shy of the goal line, and the clock's hit zero on the play. Wow, what a finish that was. What a great victory for the Rams. Heartbreaker for the Titans. But the game's most valuable player in that game was quarterback Kurt Warner, number 13 of the Rams. That takes us to January 30th, 2002. The Utah Jazz, legendary number 32, Carl Malone, became only the second player in National Basketball Association history at the time to register 34,000 career points. Think about that number for a second, 34,000. The talented power forward tossed in 18 points in a 90-78 to win over the Chicago Bulls at the Delta Center. The top player at the time scoring was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who wore number 33, uh, with 38,387, he thought 34,000 was a big number. Wow, he was 4,300 4, more than Carl Malone. And uh, remember Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Well, he played for the Los Angeles Lakers and the Milwaukee Bucks during his career and uh, scored all those points. Uh, that's quite a bit. Remember the old sky hook for uh, Kareem. January 30th, 2018, the Houston Rockets forward James Harden, who wore number 13, registered the highest scoring triple-double in National Basketball Association history when he recorded 60 points, 10 rebounds, and 11 assists as the Rockets outlasted the Orlando Magic 114-107. to They needed every point they had of uh, James Harden. And that game was played in Houston. Now Harden also has wore lucky number 13 with the Brooklyn Nets of late. Now that's just some great uh, history that we had there. And uh, we're going to give you a little bit more but we normally we have our takes of the day our jersey takes of the day uh, we have some guests coming on there but since it's a sunday we're going to give everybody a little bit of day of rest and just a reminder of what my favorite jersey in the whole wide world is and it's one that i own uh, my lovely wife had bought it for me for a christmas present one time and that is jack lambert's number 58 jersey i have it in black from the 1976 season it's got the uh, bicentennial seal up on the uh, up on the upper arm area upper chest area uh you know sewn on letters nice heavy jersey and uh you know lambert on the back and i just loved jack lambert when i was a kid watching him i you know his toothless grin his you know teams would get him mad boy he, that's when he would respond i can remember the, the cowboys in the super bowl when they uh, beat up on Bradshaw pretty good, and then they, uh, you know, they said a few things to Lambert when he was out in the field. And next play, I think he just about took uh, Tony Dorsett's head off on the, the next play as he shot into the backfield. He wasn't a very big linebacker for the time. He'd definitely be small for this era, but boy, could that man hit! Uh, he could find the ball and he could shed blocks. And uh, you know, of course, when you have four big guys the steel curtain in front of you they can absorb a lot of the blocks that uh, people the linemen can't get to that second level and they got to worry about the likes of Elsie Greenwood and Mean Joe Green and Ernie Holmes and the rest of the the gang there just a tremendous player but I, I just love me some Jack Lambert I think he's one of the greatest linebackers middle linebackers of all time and uh, just a, a true icon for a young man watching the football in western Pennsylvania so appreciate you coming on today and uh, listening to our sports jersey dispatch podcast make sure you check out the pigskin dispatch we have some great football history for you each and every day too so jump on over there on your feed and check them out too and a very special thanks to all the information gained from the following brilliant internet sites uh you know newspapers.com on the state.sports uh, on the state sports.com i'm sorry uh the sports reference family of website you know with the hockey pro football baseball and uh 
you know, the rest of them, and StatHead that they owned too, StatHead.com, bring some great statistics into the whole mix here. Appreciate that. Uh, we have some great music uh, by uh, Gene and Mike Monroe at the beginning. Also, Jason Neff uh, for some of songs in the middle, and the next song you're going to hear here and during the closing credits. Uh, we appreciate them all, and we appreciate you, and keep on enjoying that sports history. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. We're dribbling around and see the shot clock's almost out, so we got to put up our shot and come back tomorrow for some more great sports history. We invite you to check out our websites, jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com, not only see the daily sports history, but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games. Find us on Pigskin Dispatch. It's also on social media outlets of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all your daily sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique Unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876, including t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, phone cases, mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com, R-O-W number one, for access to the full Row 1 catalog and for gallery prints and gift items, plus get a 15% discount off all prints on the Row 1 Pictorum Gallery with coupon code SHN15. Follow the link on the show notes.